good afternoon, good evening for some people. <laughs> it's, it's the Being Your Own CEO Success Circle. We get together because we like each other's company. We love sharing discoveries and doing a bit of experimentation. And some of us actually do a little business together as well. So welcome here. And uh, this morning we are going to be talking about SEO for YouTube. But before that happens, we need to do, to do some introductions. So I, um, you're going to hear some doorbells ringing here as people are coming in. So um, as you can see by my screen, I'm Lowell Ann. And I like to call myself the Elder Geek. I love um, creating websites. I love helping people with all their online things, some of their Google things, some of their Zoom things, and um, even thinking about uh, setting up an online business. So, and um, lately I've been playing with InVideo and experimenting and uh, doing um, posting some little in videos here and there. So that's my latest thing. So um, let's see, Vivek, would you like to um, introduce yourself? Namaste. My name is Vivek Anand. I am proud to share my belief with uh, Steve Jobs and Leonardo da Vinci, who said simplicity is the ultimate in sophistication. I aim to bring time-tested wisdom and happiness together into your business and life by unifying, simplifying, and amplifying simple technology and tools. Wake Technology is my company. Together, let us wake up our potential. So that's my introduction. Uh, I am in United Kingdom, England. Um, the weather has been pretty cold but it has improved last two days it has uh, temperature is in double digits today so it's uh, not too bad yeah that's good to hear um <laughs> of course everybody knows that we in victoria have had an incredible snow dump so uh even UK had uh, uh, coldest uh, temperatures for uh, over 25, 30 years. It broke quite a few records. The, even the river Thames was uh, frozen for a, a day or so, which was uh, really... <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Wow. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, it seems to be happening all over the planet. Mm. Um, yeah. So thank you for introducing yourself. Uh, David, you are here next. So how would you like to introduce yourself? Um, I'd like to introduce myself standing on my head. Oh, no, never mind. Um, I'm Dave Flannery with Affordable Websites uh, for Small Businesses. Um, I'm here in Rock Falls, Illinois. We are streaming on YouTube and on the website. Facebook, what it does is it refers you to the YouTube. You have mm -hmm. to, if you click on it, it goes to YouTube. So we're actually just streaming on YouTube. Um, mm -hmm. That, our weather is uh, minus 12 degrees centigrade right now. Um, we're supposed to get to about maybe... 15 degrees below zero centigrade for the day, and we are on a warming trend. We're supposed to be above zero come um, Sunday, and we've got about three foot of, over three foot of snow on the ground right now, and we got another and a half last night. Okay, and David, just a reminder, put your pen away. <laughs> <laughs> we 
<laughs> that's an in joke uh, which I uh, we won't explain. <laughs> so, Paul, how would you like to introduce yourself? <laughs> nice to have you back, but you are muted. You, you are, are still sti muted, you Paul. You are still muted, Paul. So the space bar thing doesn't always work. Interesting. <laughs> this is true. We all know. We've all discovered that it does sometimes, and sometimes if you've clicked on something else, then um, it, that that function gets lost. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's try this then. Uh, at uh, TTG International Management, we like to think of a uh, business taking your idea to profitable action as being a journey and just think of us as your Sherpas along that trip. <laughs> as far as the weather goes, I'm two blocks from Lone Land, so we've covered that. <laughs> right. <laughs> so welcome here, Paul. Nice to see you. Now let me see who is next. I think it was Fred. Thank you very much, Lowell Ann, and good to see everyone today. I'm Fred Jones, the creator of Our Future Leaders, where I assist young people to gain communication and leadership skills so they can become the leaders that our world so badly needs. Uh, I'm currently on my friend's boat in Ladysmith, where it has snowed. There's a lot of snow on the dock and on the deck, and I haven't been out of this boat, not even on the dock for the last few days. Tomorrow is my shopping day, so I'm. looks like it's going to melt, though. It's currently 2 degrees centigrade, and mm -hmm. it's going up to about 7, 8 degrees today, so a lot of the snow hopefully will disappear before I try and find my car. Hopefully it's not buried in snow, so. I haven't even seen it, so I don't know where. I... <laughs> anyway, that's the report. Everybody's giving weather reports because it's unusual weather, I guess. Mm -hmm. But I'm happy to be here and glad to see so many friendly faces. Mm -hmm. Happy that you're here. I, I was thinking about you um, over the last few days and thinking, you know, my recollection is that living on a boat, it's really, in this weather, it's cold. So I wondered if you've been freezing. I see you have a nice heavy jacket on. Oh, you've got a heater, small heater right on. I've got a couple. No, you muted, You just muted yourself. I've got a couple heaters, one here and one yeah. underneath, the, underneath the desk. And that's what keeps the little fan heaters keep me going. Yeah. So. Yeah, we can hear them actually. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I'm glad you're surviving, Fred. Uh, Matthew, I I don't I I might have made the mistake. You might have been here before Fred. I don't know. <laughs> but go <laughs> go ahead and introduce yourself. I am Matthew Powell, and I run Coastline Marketing Incorporated, which is a a boutique media company for medium, small, medium, and, and large companies. It used to be local, but now we've gone uh, to the states as well. And um, we, uh, we basically, what we do is we give a damn. We're digital asset managers. Matthew, can barely hear you. Oh. Yeah, is that better? Okay. So we give a damn, which means digital asset management. We, we, ask, we, <laughs> <laughs> we manage on. everything. Yeah. <laughs> we manage everything from Facebook to websites to you name it. Uh, my job is to do a lot of writing, blogging, content creation for Google, because every writer works for Google these days, uh, and uh, and for the clients, of course, and for their customers. I won't go into the weather because I'm, uh, what, six or seven blocks from Loa Land, so it's the same here, except for my kids are a little upset that their snowmen are now melting. <laughs> Too bad. <laughs> Oh dear, I have I have to say something here before before you, Alana. Everybody in Victoria says, "Oh, I love the snow. It's so pretty." <laughs> and my reaction coming from the East Coast 
You have no idea how inconvenient snow can be. And you guys all got it this time. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's so pretty. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I like to say, well, and somebody will say, oh, it's raining. And I'm saying, you don't have to shovel rain. So, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> So, Alana, glad you made it. How would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, everybody. My name is Alana uh, Bur Bur Birmingham, and I live in Ireland. My company is ALB Digital Marketing Solutions, where I write copy for small businesses and help them with their managing their websites, and I also do SEO research for them. Um, I'm not going to complain about the weather. Um, look, I, I was raised on the East coast of the States and we had blizzards every winter. So I'm well adept to the snow situation, but here in Ireland, we had some snow. I want to say Friday night, it came in about five in the morning and I just happened to get up for whatever reason. And I look out the window and there's a beautiful blanket of snow. And then by eight o'clock in the morning, it was all gone because it started raining. So I didn't get to play in it this time. I was a little bummed. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, and today's like a spring day and then we're going to get a cold front. Now, Lowland, I hear you about the rain, but in defense, I have to say, in Ireland, when it rains, it's a cold, damp rain that gets right into your bones. And I don't like it. I'll take the snow any day. Sorry. <laughs> Unless, unless they're, unless they're fertilizing daffodils. Oh, <laughs> well, my daffies are out on my balcony. <laughs> oh, wow. Good for you. Yeah, they are. Well, my rose, my rose bush in the front yard has buds on it and I don't know how long they're going to last because we're getting another cold front. So I don't know. I, I feel sorry for the animals. I don't think they know what season it is anymore. So right. yeah, so that's me. Happy to be here. Oh, I'm glad you made it. And I see David has his hand up and I can see why. We have some uh, something going on in the comments, David. Um, we have Kathy Pop in the um, in there and she's uh, saying we have power outage because of the ice, snow and extreme cold. And she's here in Texas. Oh, and we have Javita who is in Mumbai. <laughs> oh dear. So uh, obviously no snow in Mumbai. No, hope no, not. No snow in Mumbai. Probably people in Mumbai don't even uh, can't relate to all the stuff that we're saying. It just probably doesn't make <laughs> any sense to them at all. <laughs> so. Yeah, you can't. You can't. Um, <laughs> Yeah. The only uh, I I got to see snow only after I came to UK yeah. while I was in India. No right. way. Right. <laughs> yeah, and so it's hard to visualize um, zero degrees or minus twenty or thirty or forty that I used to experience when I lived in the <laughs> Arctic, and it's hard to visualize snow. <laughs> <laughs> It's an interesting planet we live on. Yeah, <laughs> that, there was this, uh, I don't know whether to call it a joke or a, a sad uh, situation or whatever. I don't know how to, but there was, this was a couple of years ago. There was a uh, internet phenomena where they were talking about, uh, hope it, uh, no, they were talking about, snow in during Christmas and they were saying uh, they were wishing that Africa would have snow in for Christmas and I said Africa snow <laughs> the planet will be going into ice age if that happens <laughs> right <laughs> oh well and well, some of africa gets snow but they don't get it in december they get it in uh, july a uh, <laughs> little bit south little africa bit. And, and places like that they they're 
they're far yeah. enough south that they can get snow. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and we always kind of um, um, think of um, um, Australia uh, at Christmas time as well. They have they have summer in uh, at Christmas time. Yeah, so it's really really interesting. Okay, let's get off the topic. And uh, David, your hand is still up. Does that mean you still wanted uh, the floor, the conch? No. Okay. So we were going to talk about SEO for YouTube this morning. And um, we may see Jay sometime later, uh, but uh, in the meantime, um, I want to show, and um, Vivek, if you could share your screen, I want to show a list of things that Jay shared with me during some coaching not long ago. So um, basically, really to, to, um, to explain search engine optimization, SEO, for YouTube. And so many people only think of SEO for search, you know, Google search. But um, we need to be paying attention to search engine optimization in, in YouTube as well. So this uh, best practices, that um, list that uh, Jay shared with me not long ago, um, is, is really um, worthwhile thinking about. Uh, but there were a couple of, now maybe we need to go back to your next slide, Vivek, because maybe that's where uh, the better place to start. Uh, no, the next one. There. So the, the place to begin, as, as um, the same as when we're posting a, um, a blog on our website, uh, etc., is to think about the title. And um, it's really important to do a keyword search to, um, to determine what is the best keyword um, to use in the title. So that, um, I mean, we're, we're all used to doing that when, we, when we're creating blogs, but that is also true if we are setting up a, um, a YouTube video. So now, um, I think, David, you had what, before we leave that topic, you had something to share about the, the whole keyword searching. Sorry. Um, yeah, I've got a number of tools that, that I've found that uh, help you find uh, keywords. Um, and the first one is TubeBuddy. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm going to share my screen and I'm just going to show you the, the website. Um, it'll, it allows you to... Um, it does a number of different things for you. Um, if, if you're on a YouTube video, like here, you can click on their extension. Oops. Well, for some reason, it's not letting me do it for right now. But you can, if you're on a YouTube video, like right now we're doing um, Loanne's video. Mm -hmm. And... Um, it normally allows you to change to your title. It's probably because we're live mm -hmm. and it's it's broadcasting live. Um, but it allows you to change to your channel, to your different prospects uh, or different uh, areas in, in your channel to be able to um, change your description, change um, mm -hmm. look at your analytics in a one-click venture instead of having to click through all of the different areas. It also allows you to do keyword research and a bunch of other things that will help you along. This has a, uh, a free account mm -hmm. and it also has a pro account that's $7 a month and it, it has a star account and a legend account. Um, as you can see, you get different things. It does include a keyword research for if you use the free version. 
Um, it's limited. You don't get unlimited amount of searches like you do if you go with the pro or the star or the legend. And um, it's a pretty good tool. It's recommended by a whole bunch of people. A second one is vidIQ. Now this one does essentially the same thing. It doesn't have the extension up in the up in the corner, but it, it allows you to 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 do different things. But it doesn't allow you to do keyword research unless you pay for it hmm. at their lower level at the seven dollars. That's when you start doing keyword research. Um, so it, it's it's one if you want to pay for. Uh, another tool is a ref. This a tool is very expensive, but this tool is used to do both Google searching and YouTube searching and does all sorts of, of um, analytics and um, allows you to see how many people are searching for it, allows you to, and, and comparisons on uh, how much, um, whether it's a good keyword or not, whether it's got a lot of competition or not, and whether it's viewed a lot. The last two that I go for is Google Trends. This is one where you can just type in a keyword. And it will tell you what's been happening for, um, well, that keyword doesn't work. Let's try a different one. And you can see, and what you're looking for when you're doing a trend and you've got, you've got a keyword is you're looking for the graph to go from smaller to larger. That means that it's trending. If the graph is going from larger to smaller, mm -hmm. then that means that it's not trending and it's not a likely subject that's going to be viewed by more people. If it's balanced like this is, it's pretty much a straight line. Um, it's also could be a good keyword hmm. uh, and there's a lot of things you can do with this to figure out whether whether it's working or not and the last one is to go to youtube itself and do alphabet soup and okay so i did homes for sale and it tell it's given me um you know, in Florida, in Texas, in Atlanta, Georgia, Texas, California, Orlando, Florida. And it's telling me um, that those are high areas that would be, it would be useful to have a video channel for these areas. Now, like I go, you can see that homes for sale in Rock Falls, Illinois, it's, it's not bringing up anything. So I, I've, I'm building a channel, but I'm not building a channel hoping I'm going to get a lot of views. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm building a channel more for my website so that when people come to the website, they'll be able to see what's about Rock Falls and whatnot, not so that they go to my YouTube channel and make it a, a star, you know, place to be able to get things. So it, depending on what you want to do, but that's, those are the keyword research tools. I'll put the links to these, uh, these other ones into the chat here, in just a few minutes and, um, mm -hmm. any questions? Well, um, I don't know if it's a question, but it's a comment. I, I, I don't, I know that, that I've always known that YouTube is, um, probably the second best search engine there is. For some reason or other, I never put the alphabet soup together with the with with the the fact that, yeah, if you can use alphabet soup in a Google search, why shouldn't you be able to do it in YouTube? It just never occurred to me. 
<laughs> so, <laughs> so thank you, um, uh, David, for sharing those things. And um, I see Jay has joined us, and we are. Uh, I we've been sharing the list that you gave me during a session that you and I had. So that's that's basically what we've been talking about. Um, the list that you provided, but also some of the other things that came up during our discussion. So um, I did give give you credit even before we put it up on the screen. <laughs> I, I'm just here for the giggles, so it's all good. <laughs> right. <laughs> so um, so we, we, we started out by just saying how important it is to pay attention to what your title is and um and to and to make sure that we that that we do a keyword search so that you get a good title but then um also in the description that um there should be a, a really good use of the keyword within the description as you're setting up your your youtube um video so that was those were the first two things that seemed to be the kind of the most important. Uh, Vivek, if you want to uh, share that screen again, maybe we could go back and look at that. Oh, and I, I meant to say while David was was um, um, talking about TubeBuddy, uh, TubeBuddy is um, a Chrome extension. And so you just go, you go in and do that, and then it shows up in, in YouTube. Okay, so as uh, so we've talked about the, uh, the title and the description, now the other, other important place was in the tags. And so in YouTube, you um, can choose tags. And again, TubeBuddy really is helpful in that regard. Um, I have my keywords, my, my usual constant keywords, I have those set up within the back end of, of YouTube. But then when you're creating a new video, you uh, on a certain topic and your keyword title and description, etc., that needs to be added as a tag. And as Jay had, had suggested, it's important that your, your keyword should be the very first tag. And so the neat thing that I discovered about TubeBuddy is it, it allows you to um, rearrange the order in which you, you do your keywords. So I wondered if, if anybody else had, had uh, out of these three things, before we move on to the the um, the next, and uh, it won't be the next, will it? It we're go we'll go backwards to the first screen that we started. But any comments or, or questions that um, come out of the those three concepts from anybody, um, Matthew? Um, I'm just wondering, TubeBuddy is it actually put out by YouTube, or is it a third party? It's it's, it's a um... It's a third party. Uh, it's but they're using so any any tool that gathers data from YouTube and injects itself into YouTube is using uh, their YouTube's provided API. So they're kind of their you know their code string, if you will. Uh, so same with TubeBuddy and also VidIQ. So okay. so that's why they say certified by Google. Oh, I see. Got it. Right on. Any um, other? Jim yeah, go ahead, David. Uh, Javita has a question. Is there a difference, any difference between keyword research for YouTube title and blog title? It's relatively the same with the exception of the output is on a different platform. So, um, you know, you're when you're searching for a YouTube video, you know, searching for a keyword specifically for YouTube videos, uh, you're going to get, you know, your search volumes, so trying to find, you know, high search volume, low competition. So the metrics are the same, but the output is executed on different platforms. Right on. 
Okay, so um, perhaps we can go back to the first screen that um, you showed there. So this this uh, this is exactly the list that uh, Jay had had uh, shared with me. So um, to talk about the high resolution thumbnail, um, David, you talked about how how you do your thumbnail, and maybe I could also talk about how I do my thumbnail. Well, I put a card in my video that is an introduction card. It tells what the video is going to be about. Like I, uh, it'll, I use for testimonials, per se. Uh, it'll say testimonial. Who's given the testimonial? My phone or our phone number, um, and a little bit more information. And I run that for five seconds. Then it rolls into the video, and I use that same card as my thumbnail. Okay. And how do you how do you pull the card? What is what do you use to to um, to generate the card within your video? Right now, I'm using Inkscape. Um, it allows me to shrink photos to where I want them to be, and then I export that as a PNG file um, and compress that, and then um, upload that to YouTube. Mm -hmm. Or I put that into, and then I put it into my video. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and then I also uploaded the, the PNG file to uh, YouTube as the, the uh, thumbnail. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, David uses a much more complicated system than I use. Um, and we have a slightly different approach to our thumbnails. My thumbnail I've, I've been using for numerous years now. It's more of a branding thumbnail. Um, that uh, was created for me years ago by by um, a local person here. And basically what I do is I just open it in <laughs> Google Slides. And I change the, um, I enter the title in that slide and then just download the, uh, the um, in, that, in this case, it, um, it's the JPEG because there's a picture in it. So I just, that's all I do is, is um, change the title and download it and that becomes my, my thumbnail. So um, I have read other suggestions uh, where it's been suggested that the most, one of the most important things that you you uh, use is your thumbnail. Your thumbnail needs to have something really enticing. Um, some people um, do a, um, an entirely different thumbnail for every video that they do. So again, it it, uh, it depends on what you're what you're hoping to achieve, whether you would use your own branding or whether you would do something dramatic and uh, eye-catching uh, for for your video so uh, I also I also use a template but it's in Inkscape and I also put in a picture of the person that's doing the the review hmm. um, and I just change that for every week uh, the background colors and all the the, hmm. the uh, other artwork is um, uh, is all the same Mm -hmm. I just change the name of the person, just change the, uh -huh. the picture of the person, and then um, I go on. And um, I we also have a couple comments yeah. from... Yeah, go ahead. Um, Javita's asking, can we use Jaxi for YouTube keyword research? And I would say no to that because that's going, that's using, that is searching Google, it is not searching YouTube. And the next, uh, Kathy is asking, or commenting, I just use paint.net to do do like ink state too. And uh, Javita says Canva is also great for creating YouTube thumbnails. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, oh, Fred. Finally, I just wanted to know what is defined as high resolution 
what you know what how many what's the size that you say for high resolution for a thumbnail it basically uh, the dimension should be four by three so wider than larger than taller mm -hmm. and, and um, so high resolution is um, just basically high quality in terms like if you want to talk about technical uh, if you can do a 300 dpi dots per inch um, type of scenario that would be great but it does get rendered out as a 72 for screens unless it's a retina screen then it's 147 um, <laughs> but okay. ba basically yeah <laughs> ba basically try to find as high quality images to stick into the thumbnail as possible uh, so, but the four by three dimension, uh, so 720 by 1280 uh, is a is a, a decent thumbnail size. Uh, if you were to design it in Canva, uh, I think someone said someone said Canva, which is mm -hmm. what I recommend using. Uh, uh, there's a preset dimension size for can in Canva for YouTube thumbnail mm -hmm. um, that you can use. So. Uh, so basically, uh, you know, like a high quality images, though, I'd be able to tell the the barometer behind you to say that it's uh, 112 kilopascals, that it's, uh, you know, that's the weather today. If, uh, you know, if you had a high high quality thumbnail there. So I don't know. Is that a barometer or a clock? That is good. They're just staring at me, burning into my soul. It's just <laughs> creeping me out. <laughs> one's a clock um, and one's a barometer. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Um, also, in terms of what uh, Javita was asking, in terms of Jaxi, um, I, keep in mind that YouTube is injected into global search results, so it's it kind of can help with with YouTube searches a little bit. It's not a direct correlation to search volume in YouTube, mm -hmm. but what it could do is is give you an idea of what people are searching for. For example, if you if you use the term "how to tie an ascot knot tie," you can hypothesize that that person searching is looking for a video. So when you see the search volume in Google in in Jaxi, then you can you know assess like all right, so maybe half of those people are going to want to see a video. So in essence, you can then you know create a video on how to tie an ascot knot tie. And uh, hmm. um, that would be you know, relevant to the to, to the Jaxi search. Um, and then, yeah, with Canva, I totally recommend Canva for building mm -hmm. thumbnails. It's easy. It's quick. They actually have pre-made thumbnails, and it's free, uh, like pre-made pre uh, thumbnail templates. Mm -hmm. um, try not to overthink. If anything, just make your fonts nice and big so that they can be read when they are when the thumbnail is small because that's what it is it's a thumbnail it's going to end up being small so it needs to be seen as to what it is mm -hmm. that it's going to be you know what someone is about to watch you know there's some people that prefer to do uh uh shock photos like where they're doing this and they get the, the outline on it and stuff right? which is which is fine i mean you know if, if that's the niche but i find that if you just do Big darn letters, you get big darn results. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I agree with that, Jay. And the only reason I'm using Inkscape is because I've been using it for so long. It's very easy for me to create my templates. I know the size that I need to make. So I tried Canva and it took me, it's taken me a while to learn um, to do some of the things that I want done. So I just decided it's just easier to stick with what I know and i can get it done yeah i've been using oh, if I go ahead go ahead um matthew I've been, I've been using adobe and uh i'm reluctant to use canva because i know it's easier dang it and faster but um yeah i, I used to have i used to be in your hell matthew um <laughs> I, <laughs> but yeah i just <clears throat> i forced myself just to use canva because i know it shaves so much time off of my off of building i don't i don't like I, I have an idea as to what i want i really do rely on um canvas templates and i know i can output a really quick thumbnail in a matter of minutes versus you know like 15 20 minutes uh and beyond in photoshop or illustrator <clears throat> so yeah 
And and the, the other thing too is is that like I have the Canva Pro and which also comes with a plethora of stock photos within the Canva uh, environment, which makes it that much easier if you're building a thumbnail for like a, a product review and you want to invoke a, an emotion with your yeah. thumbnail, you know, happy, happy type of thing. So, uh, and they've yeah, got tons of, of great thumbnails in there. So they also have the free thumbnails, or I'm sorry, three free photos, obviously limited, but but yeah, the pro, which is what, 100, 100 bucks Canadian a year or something. Oh, wow. 12 a year so i mean it's uh you know it's a forgettable price where it's just it's so now go. you're referring to pro canva or pro photoshop canva canva okay. pro canva okay. yeah i didn't think pro uh, photoshop was that cheap <laughs> right <laughs> okay so i think i think we've covered the the thumbnail um um um, topic well enough so info cards added and end screen added those are two things that I have yet to figure out how to do I know that the cards um, tend to be little uh, little things that you can put at, um, at the top and it seemed to me that in order for me to be able to use that card I have to have uh, pro YouTube. So I don't know, Jay, if you have any comments about that. Are you referring to the info cards or the end yeah. screen? Yeah, the info card. So the info cards, you, there are limitations based off of how many, sub, like if you're part of the, um, the advertiser platform. So you have the thousand subs yeah. and 4, 6,000 watch hours. Yeah. So uh, when you have that, uh, then you can place a link, a hyperlink in your video. Otherwise, you can use uh, info cards to, to navigate to other videos, to your other videos. So there are limitations um, until you get to uh, yeah. become part of the, the, the YouTube subscribe, the YouTube advertising program which is required to have a thousand subs subscribers right. and 6,000 uh, watch hours in total. Right. Still. So right. it's, it's, it's still, you can still use it. And, yeah. and the same goes to the end screen. Uh, no end screens you can use uh, regardless of how many subs you have and uh, end screen. Basically it, it, it creates a little template overlay at the near end of your video. And one will be a little circle with your avatar, which is a subscribe bu button, basically. Mm -hmm. And then um, the other would be, you can have one, two, uh, would be uh, another video that you mm -hmm. can put into that little square rectangle, uh, which takes people to another video. Now your choices are, you can select the video. Mm -hmm. You can have YouTube select uh, your, the video in your channel or you can have it go to like a, a completely separate video altogether mm -hmm. like someone else's channel if you wanted to mm -hmm. i choose just let youtube choose because it still stays within my channel and i just let it handle it itself mm -hmm. i don't need to unless it's i there's a specific flow or a funnel that i want mm -hmm. from a specific video okay and and that's a so think of that as an internal link and right. internal links in in SEO are are darn good. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a good, that's a good way to think about that. Okay. Mm. Okay. All right. So um, thank you for that because um, <laughs> I have yet to uh, get those two things done. The next item on the list was a comment pinned. So the, uh, this I have implemented and basically I think what uh, Jay was suggesting is that in the, in the description after the video has been done, in the description below uh, to put a comment and to make sure again that your keyword is in that comment, but then to uh, pin it. Uh, there's a little button on the side which makes makes it so that no matter who else adds a comment, that 
comment that I've added there with the keyword in it is pinned to the top. So um, that's a relatively easy thing to do, but it seems to work easier and better uh, after the video has gone live and at, you know after your afterward rather than beforehand I haven't um, I haven't I guess I haven't tried to uh, to put a comment in the description below beforehand has anybody else tried that yep yeah. it's uh it's 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 great because uh, again, having that keyword in there, yeah. having the keyword in the comment and pinning it, uh, think about it as a, as a, almost like a, I think it was like a meta description. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, um, um yeah. So and I, I uh, have, I have done it, but I think I've, it's been afterward. Yeah. Yeah, the afterward is still good. You know, you can yeah. always go back to old videos and do these, and and do these um, elements, and it'll it'll certainly help, right? Oh God, Jay, don't say that. There's more than there's about two hundred and fifty videos in there. <laughs> well, get cracking. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Okay, so. Um, so that's the the comments and i i like the way uh jay ha has um um sort of linked that up with our our thinking and our knowledge for for doing uh, good good uh, blog posts so when, when when we're at when we're able to kind of link those two together we can see the importance of it so that's really really great so now the next item there says linked on Facebook. And um, this is something else that I have played with. And I found that when I'm setting up the, the live stream within YouTube, uh, there's, a, there's a button there where you can link it to Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn and a dozen other things and i've i've experimented with going into facebook and putting in the links manually from within facebook and i've also experimented experimented with doing all of this from within youtube and i find that there's i i seem to have better luck by doing the link from youtube than by going in and doing the, the, the you know the, the linking manually. I don't know why, but it seems to it seems to work better. So uh, but that is just linking to Facebook. Now the, the, the concept is uh, or the, the, the item says liked on Facebook. So now Jay, um, I wasn't certain what you meant by that. You mean going over to YouTube and um, that link and liking it yourself or encouraging everybody you know to go in and like it? So you want to uh, share the video in in Facebook uh, and, and have someone like it. It could be you, it could be someone else. It doesn't matter. Correct. Oh. Yeah. Uh, ideally, it would be someone else, but <laughs> right. as long as there uh, there is a like, it'll check that little thing off. Yeah. Right on. Okay. Oh, and uh, bef before I forget, uh, I I would like to mention that VidIQ does have a browser, a Chrome browser extension, mm -hmm. a along yeah, along with a a mobile app, as does uh, YouTube or TubeBuddy. Mm, right. So do you do you see any advantage of one over the other? That's a really good question. And I find that TubeBuddy is good for beginners when you're just kind of getting started into uh, into this mm -hmm. because their their UI, their user interface is is kind of easy to read. Uh, and then I think as you become more proficient and recognize the data, 
Um, then, you know, moving over into vidIQ uh, is ideal. I've tried both. I've tried both pros, mm -hmm. like, or whatever, you know, the higher level versions mm -hmm. that they have. And <clears throat> I prefer vidIQ. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Well, what I liked, uh, as I mentioned earlier about TubeBuddy, is it allows you to uh, rearrange your your tags. Mm -hmm. That I found was really helpful and useful. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. okay. So, um, moving on. So, um, the next uh, item in the in the list was captions added. Now, this is something I have never used. Um, I don't know, uh, David and uh, everybody else. Has anybody else used the captions added feature? Um, that, I think, for someone like me who has an accent, I'm an Indian, you see. So people can't understand what I'm saying. So I have to put subtitles, even though it, both are in English. I'm speaking English, but people don't. Anyway, <laughs> that is one of the things. Even YouTube doesn't seem to understand often what I'm saying. So there you go. So when you add a caption, if, if the caption isn't correct, are, is, are you able to go in and correct it? Yes, you are. Okay. You uh, the you mean you're talking about the auto generated uh, uh, captions. captions? They can be you can correct them and uh, re-upload them. Um, it does. I think it it will be very useful. Yes. Hmm. So I have used it uh -huh. in the past. Well, and that's that's a good point, uh, Vivek. <laughs> the 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 other aspect is it also helps uh, translating your your um, if there is someone who is watching maybe who is in Germany or Italy or mm -hmm. France or wherever uh, and if they have a software which can translate mm -hmm. the subtitles if you have the captions there that will be helpful for translating it hmm. okay uh, that's a really good point uh, Vivek uh, I, I was I was going to, I was just thinking about how um, there's one accent that I have l a lot of difficulty catching uh, and that is the Australian the outback Australian accent I really have a hard time with that so um, that means that if I'm watching a video or, or a movie, I really should turn on the captions, which I never think to do. So, <laughs> and, but our ears get trained for um, various accents. And um, I know that, um, um, I mean, it, it doesn't matter where you live in the world. There, we all, ha everybody has a different accent, a different way of speaking. So I, uh, that's a good point. That's that's really uh, um, a useful thing. Anybody else uh, try it, using it? Uh, um, David, do you ever use it? I have not used it, but in my research, I have had people say that you should download your your caption and edit it and then upload it again because it will um, get Google likes it when it's it, you provide the caption as opposed yep. to just using the automatic caption because then they know it's a true trans or true transcript description of the, the video hmm. I wouldn't even know how to download the caption or even set it up boy there's some more experimentation for me. <laughs> yeah, you, you I had uh, I had created a video long, long ago uh, about how to do that. Of course, quite a few things would have changed by now. But yeah, I, I yeah. You can share that link with me. <laughs> yeah, but the things would have changed quite a bit now. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I can. Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, and one of the other things about captions is we forget how many. Uh, young people 
use uh, mobile devices to watch stuff and often they have the sound turned off. Mm. Very good point, Paul. Very good point. Because if you're out and about somewhere, you don't want your sound on because it disturbs other people. Uh, not only that, you may not even be able to hear it properly. You may, it, the environment may be too noisy. You're not able to listen to it properly unless you have a headset or something. So, but you want to watch the video, but if the subtitles are there or captions as they are called, then it helps. Aha. Uh -huh. That's um, a really, really good um, good reason to, to use it as well. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So here we are at the next item on the list, comment hearted. <laughs> I think what that means is that the comment that uh, any of the comments that are added to your YouTube video, the, the below part that um, the, I, I think from my perspective, I would go in and, and, and indicate that that would be my way of indicating that I've read it. But um, I'm wondering if there's another big reason uh, to be doing that. Jay, can you comment on that? Uh, on doing what? Sorry, I, I was doing something. <laughs> Heart, hearting, hearting the comment. Oh, yeah, so absolutely. <clears throat> so it's just, again, it's a little algorithm to say, oh, someone's like that comment, hmm. right? Similar to when we used to Google Plus each other. <laughs> so I, like, if somebody leaves a comment uh, in, the, in the description of my, uh, mm -hmm. one of my videos, I get to see that a comment is there and I go in and heart it. Quite often I put a reply of some sort. Yep. But so the hearting would be not just me hearting, but other people doing the same. No, you only heart on your own channel. Oh, that there's something that I thought that other people could do. They can reply, can't they? Correct. They, they can reply and like. Okay, that's different so, from hearting? Correct, yeah. So there's a little thumb thumbs up icon, which you can also do, but you can heart it to say, you get a gold star for that comment. Oh. Right on your, right on your, your little book report, yeah. Okay, so there's another little piece that I was not aware of. Okay. And Paul, it's mobile friendly. The heart is mobile friendly. Okay, <laughs> so I need to go in and heart any comments that are there. Right on. <laughs> now, um, so I'm, but boy, I'm learning a lot from this uh, discussion. I don't know if everybody else is, but I'm sure <laughs> learning a lot. <laughs> so the last item here uh, on this list is chapters added. And I have to say, I've been doing that for several months now and um so i'm wondering if everybody understands what that means chapters is um what you um it i think it used to be called something different before but what you do is you within the description of the video itself not the not the description below but within the description, description you add um, zero zero colon you, zero. You zero. add timestamps. Time you essentially stamp. add timestamps. But you must start with zero zero colon zero zero. Mm -hmm. It won't take if you don't do that. So then you um, you add timestamps for very and put in the uh, the topic or the the item so that. So that people who are visiting the, the video later can um, just go to the, the um, item that, that is of interest to them. And I, 
I think that is a, a really important one if you're doing a long video, such as this success circle is always at least an hour long. And nobody um, these days has time to go in and listen to every word. So when they go back to to um, to look at it, if if the timestamp is in there that that uh, gives, let's say, the very beginning of somebody's presentation and the very end or whatever, that allows them to um, to make better use of their time. They can they will be able to just click on the timestamp in within the description. Mm -hmm. It'll the YouTube will take them to that point mm -hmm. in the video yeah. so they don't have to um, pull the drag the right. player thing and fiddle with it no they just click on that yeah. timestamp it takes them to that point well um that's extremely useful uh people are using uh or i'm using and i think others are uh youtube as as a learning channel and often you'll go to people who have learning and they'll be doing a number of items. Mm -hmm. And if I want to go back, particularly if I viewed it before, but I want to go back and find one of the items, it's just, it's anybody who does it, I tend to watch more of their videos mm -hmm. because when I go back to them, I know I can just go to what I want. Uh huh. Yes. I, I couldn't agree more. I've, I've, I've discovered that when I'm looking for instructions on how to do things as well. Yeah. So, um, so, but, but I think it's especially important if you if your video is a long one. Yeah. So, Fred, I see you clicking. Do you want to say something? I think you turned yourself on oh, there. No, I, I just wanted to know. I, I know the timestamps, and does chapters added create the timestamps for you? I mean, once you've got that, then where yeah. does it get the little description? You, how have, does it... you have to type them in. Oh, okay. Into, That's all I was wondering. Into thought, the description. How does it... yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's all I wanted to know. Thanks. Yeah. And I, I have to say also, um, I quite often make a few notes about some of the key points that were raised within the video and I quite often add some of those key points in the notes as well. Um, Lovellan, can I share the screen and show one of your uh, yeah. timestamps that you have done? Yes, so yes. It becomes clearer. Thank you, that's, that's nice. <laughs> so this is one of Lovellan's uh, success circles and here are the chapters if you see this white bar here i wonder whether it's very clear or not you see breaks in them there that is also an indication of someone ha who has created those chapters mm -hmm. the chapters are here so if i click on any of these blue numbers the YouTube jumps to that point mm -hmm. and start playing from there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you for doing that. That that um, uh, that may make it a little clearer for for people. Yeah. So it means that you have to go after the session. You have to go listen to it all over again. <laughs> <laughs> but I have discovered that 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 has its use as well because I like to put notes there and I also like to put notes on on my website to go with the video and that uh, allows me to uh, really um, really be clear about what what were the key points because when you're hosting sometimes you can miss things etc so it kind of helps to uh, to be able to do that and uh, David I see you have your hand up yeah, um, I was going to change subjects unless if you're done, then I would like to know what Jay thought about um, the uh, um, playlist, if they help on SEO. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so basically it's a, it's a whole new YouTube 
uh, video link, uh, at which point you can then embed that onto a post and and share that and 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 whatnot. So, um, you know, it's it's somewhat indirect SEO, meaning. So what you're going to hopefully have is you're going to hopefully have people go from video A to video B within that playlist. So which is that internal link, which is the the info card, the end cards, uh, or sorry, the end screen, mm -hmm. where this kind of does this for you automatically. And uh, so the internal links help. <clears throat> the individual exposure of the video helps as well. And and really what the playlist does is it kind of automates that for you. Now, if each video is an hour long, that's not going to work. Right. But if it's a, sh if they're short videos, mm -hmm. um, then that's going to be, that's going to mm -hmm. work really well. Yeah. Well, I, I've been using playlist for a long time. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I've got a year in there so that I, uh, everything is, is, um, categorized by year but also topics as well, main, main topics. So uh, you, you can populate the playlists automatically by using the tags. So that's one of the reasons why tags are also very important. Mm -hmm. um, if you have a consistent tag mm -hmm. for uh, different things and uh, you can use that tag as Whenever you have a, you can you can set up the playlist so that whenever there is a video with a certain tag, it gets automatically added to the playlist. So you don't have to go and maintain the playlist. It gets automatically. Oh. It'll expand and it'll add more videos as you upload them or add them. I had realized there was a connection between the tags and the playlist. Yeah. <laughs> Oh. When you, when you create a playlist, it allows you to it gives an option there to say add all videos with this tag. Oh, oh. yeah, missed that one. There's another <laughs> one that I another item I missed. <laughs> David, your hand is still up. Or does that mean you're? Oh, he's took taken it down. <laughs> um. Vivek, I think, have we covered, I think there was one more screen, was there not? Or was there? Um, so that was the, that was the, the first one. Yep. That was the next, that was the next one. I uh, I need to go. Yeah, we, we have we, we are, have covered all the three things. We have yeah. co we have covered everything. Yeah. Bef but before I go, did you want to see all of this in action? Like meaning like a, a, an actual result of what happens yes. when you do this? That would be lovely. All right, one sec. So if you all can just swipe your credit cards now. <laughs> Let's see here. I, uh, um, um, Jay, <laughs> <laughs> he's got his credit card up there. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just really want to say that, um, this information has been extremely informative and helpful to me. Um, so I thank you for, uh, for uh, sharing that with me originally. And also thank you for taking the time to come in and support uh, us as we talk about this. Yeah, no problem. Let's see. Hmm. Okay, so here's, here's one. It's an Australian accent though, but I won't, I'll just pause the video. All right, so this is Paul. Mm -hmm. And Paul has a, he has a nice little intro video too, which is kind of nice. Mm -hmm. 
Look at all that tropical stuff. Doesn't it make you jealous? <laughs> His backyard is a beach. It's a pretty nice, he has a pretty nice place where he lives in Australia. Okay, so his title is How to Sell Watches Online. Mm -hmm. So this video only has 51 views. Uh, it's about 15, 16 days old. Mm -hmm. All right, so the target, so keep in mind the target keyword is how to sell watches online. So if I zoom in, you can see there's the keyword. And then there is the hashtag you can see there. And the first hashtag is how to sell watches online. Second one is sell watches online. And the third one is watch affiliate programs. Now, the way you get those little hashtags in is put hashtags in the description of the video, which I'll show you shortly, Oh. which, which shows, which will show the first three hashtags. So if I zoom out, here is his description. And then in here is uh, somewhere is in how to, you know, the, the, the target keyword here. Okay. And then there, so there's his, uh, there's a link to his post. There's the hashtags. There is the, the chapters right mm -hmm. here. Let's scroll down. Here's the pinned comment. Mm -hmm. Hey guys, thanks for watching my video covering how to sell watches online to see the post click the link below. And then I'll move you guys over here. Yes, yeah, so I have to move it too. <laughs> I'm going to zoom in. And here are his video tags mm -hmm. right here. And this number, number nine, represents the position he is in for that particular keyword. Mm -hmm. So he is currently position nine. So first page of, of YouTube search results for how to sell watches online. And position eight for sell watches online. Mm -hmm. So it, it just goes to show you that with a little bit of effort doing this, and treating this each video like a blog post, you get some good results like this. Mm -hmm. So a question, um, how, um, how, do you, how do you get the, the tags as, as hashtags into the description? Do you, do you do it by hand or is there an auto way to do it? You, you do it by hand. So if I go to mine, edit video so I'm in my edit mode yep and I go to the bottom of my description mm -hmm. and there's my three hashtags oh, okay and those which show the those the and those are your keywords that you used in the tags yeah. as well right on exactly so so there's two tags there's two kinds of tags there's hashtags which belong in the description yeah. or they call it the video details and then there's the um video tags which are here correct right on okay yeah and by the way i can i can organize these tags as well in vidIQ yeah okay yeah. there you go so um, those analytics that you showed on the side of the other chaps is uh, is that uh, those analytics are those provided by VidIQ as well? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But uh, yeah, exactly, and that's and that's just what uh, yeah, that's the video or VidIQ thing. Mm -hmm. so right on. It's a it, it's a nice it's a nice little feature. Mm -hmm. But we, here's one of the things that I really like about. VidIQ is if I go to anyone's channel, mm -hmm. so go to Paul's channel here, I can I can click on 
this little thing that says talk oh, keywords. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. I click on that. It's going to do a scrape of his entire channel, and it's going to tell me what his top keywords are. Mm -hmm. At which point then, and, and also sort it by a kind of search volume. You know, right. So you can see there. Holy smokes. Look at that. So, yeah. So now I can kind of go, hmm, this is kind of cool. So these are all like good keywords. And mm -hmm. I can then basically steal his keywords and make my own videos. <laughs> right. <laughs> right on. And yeah. that top keywords is uh, is is only a feature in vidIQ. Uh, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know if if TubeBuddy has it, but uh, mm. I know that. I don't remember ever seeing it, but then you has it. Yeah. <laughs> but sometimes when you're not looking for things, you don't see them. I see Fred has his hand up. Oh, he was just waving goodbye because we've run over. <laughs> so, so I can then take that keyword, any one of those keywords, click on it, and then it gives me the metrics for this particular, uh, for that keyword. So I clicked on affiliate marketing for beginners, mm -hmm. and I can see the search volume. Mm -hmm. So this is actually a, a, a good keyword to, to go after here. So mm -hmm. if I zoom in a bit. So the keyword provided is affiliate marketing for beginners. Most use six out of 10. Uh, search volume shows me the, the search mm -hmm. volume. Competition is low. So that's pretty good. So this would be a great keyword to yeah. go after. And then you can see there's variants of that. Yes. Right. How to start affiliate marketing for beginners. So what I would do is I would create a video on how to start affiliate marketing for beginners, which targets this keyword, which has a lower search volume, but it also has that within this one it. as well within the, mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right on. There you go. So thank you so much for sharing that because um, being able to see um, one done in in the full um, is is for me at least uh, very useful. I'm sure uh, it's been very useful for everyone else. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking at the time we have gone way over for which I apologize. But on the other hand, uh, I think we covered a lot of very valuable information so um oh we don't have fred for the last word i think yes. i think we should dele delegate the last word to paul <laughs> and hopefully his hopefully his tourettes won't kind of burst out when he starts talking so, yeah. <laughs> do you want to give the last word paul <laughs> yeah <clears throat> yes i do have fun stay healthy ciao for now <laughs> <laughs> thank you. I need to do my outro now. <laughs> so thank you all. And oh, yes, I, I do need to say, remind everybody it's important to do what you love with passion and let you know that next week, Vivek and I are unveiling the Of Course course. So um, the title of the session is Online Course uh, Writing but we're going to talk about and unveil our Of Course course. So having said that, see you again next week. Bye for now. Bye, everyone.